Hi, me again. And today's video is a little bit about uh, an answer to a video that was put out the other day by uh, Mike, uh, Mike Gervin. And this is to look at a situation here where the customer wanted to find an item in the data by simply typing in the row number, but on a different sheet. So for example, uh, if they were to type in number 14, which is row number 14, they would expect to see Lindsay Vaughan. Now, this is the quite elegant solution that Mike Gervin came up with, and it's using indirect, and it's a very good use of indirect, um, by then concatenating the text, which tells it to switch sheets to the data sheet, and then go to column D, and find whatever has been typed in there. Uh, one of the comments was from Bill Scissors, and his comment was, why not just use index? And this is what I would have gone for straight away. Um, I would, I agree with Bill here. This is a really clean solution. Um, index from the sheet data and anything in the column D, and then simply whatever you typed in as the row number. Now let's have a look at the data here, because there's a couple of other things that you can do with it. So here, what I've got is this data is stored in a table. Now, what we could do is have a look at the the table design give it a table name first of all um, so i'm going to call this one data and this has also got a column called data and another column called scores and this gives us a little bit more versatility and when we're looking at the summary sheet here what we could now do is we could type in something else underneath we could say let's have a look and see what's in row 12. now because this is also a table when I do that it will then also find who's at row 12 so the beauty of having not only my source data in a table but my summary data also in a table means when I type in a number immediately underneath it automatically adds that into my table and of course the formula that I've got here will auto fill down as I continue and You'll see there I type in 8 and it gives me Fatima. So I've got 14, 12 and 8, Lindsay, Jacqueline, Fatima. And when I go back to my data, 8 gives me Fatima, 12 gives me Jacqueline, 14 gives me Lindsay. Now, what about if someone typed in a 5? Well, it's going to give me, uh, it's not going to find it, it's going to give me a 0 value because it doesn't have any data in cell 5. Now, this leads us to the case where they actually might want to know where that item is within this here rather than what row number it is so if it's a position number one number two number three now why might they want to do that well for example if they've sorted by um so let's sort by the score that they're getting so we've got the person who's got the largest score at the top we might want to find number one in that list based upon the fact they've got the biggest score now that's not the data that's in row one it's item number one within my data set so we do that slightly differently. So let's just have a look and see how we do that here. So row number and data. And what we're going to do for the row number, we'll just type in number one. And for our data, what we want to do is we want to find the index and we want to find it from an array, but the array this time is not going to be the whole of column D. When I come down here and hover here, I get another downward arrow, and that just selects the data body inside my data range. Now, the key thing about this is this is dynamic. So this will give me number one, number two, number three, whatever, irrespective of how big that data is. And it will automatically update when items are added on the end. OK, that's all I need. And then I say, but what number do I want? So this is the row number. And this will be the row number, whatever's been typed in there. And you'll notice it's typed in summary sheet. It doesn't actually need summary sheet in there. Um, it is the summary sheet, uh, but it doesn't actually need it because it knows that that's coming from a table on another sheet. So number one, is Madison and it's Madison now let's imagine another scenario here 
we'd actually like to see what her score was. So we'll simply take that and instead of me having B12 in there, I'm just going to hit the F4 key until it's locked in the column. So as I copy this across here, it's going to refer to that cell there. Now what this is now doing is giving me the percentage score. And the reason it's giving me that percentage score is because as I copy this one across to the right, it's not relative. So it copied this one across to the right for what it's referring to the index from. And this one is referring to data. And if you look here in this one, that's referring to data scores. OK, clearly I could just format that as percentage and we'll be able to see how much they've got. And again, if I turn this one into a table, so Control T and Enter, this now becomes dynamic as well. So I could now do two and three to get the first, second and third person by name and with their percentage score. OK, so this is just a little quick video just to add to what Mike did and what Bill Cesar suggested. I hope it's been useful. And thank you for listening.